The South and West Side residents rallied outside the former South Shore High School this evening to protest the city's response to the influx of migrants in the city. Two South Shore residents have refiled a lawsuit hoping to change some of the city's current policies. WGN's Andrea Medina live in South Loop with the latest details on that, Andrea. Mike and Ray residents not only want city leaders to prioritize resources in their communities, but many also want them to put an end to what they call inhumane living conditions for migrants, conditions similar to the one at the first district police station behind me. Upset with the individuals who are being allowed to cross the borders into America. Natasha Dunn is, however, outraged by the government and city's response in handling the migrant crisis in Chicago. Dunn was joined by her attorney, Southside and Westside residents, Tuesday evening in South Shore. We're seeing resources fly out to help, but we're not getting that same type of support. That's why she and another South Shore resident announced they have refiled a lawsuit against the city and mayor. The lawsuit was originally filed back in May, but it has been amended to address three concerns. The first is preventing the shuttered South Shore High School from being turned into a shelter for asylum seekers. This building, this building was promised to the community and our children deserve a high school. A high school, we want to reopen this That's as right. one. The second request is for the city to stop housing migrants in public schools, parks, and police stations. Parks are not being parked where kids can go and play, right. and police stations are not policing. That's right. That's right. All of them have one thing in common. What's that? They are hotels and shelters. And lastly, the residents want the migrants to be treated humanely and not be sleeping on the floors of overcrowded police stations or tents. It's conditions like the ones at the first police district near 17th and state they don't approve of. Today, migrants' belongings were crammed on the sidewalk for hours. Some of the migrants are not sure why they were not allowed in, but they say they were forced out since the morning and were finally let back in around 7 p.m. They need to be treated with dignity, kindness, an open arm. They've made it clear they're not anti-migrants, but they do feel neglected. City leaders are not prioritizing them when they demanded for better resources in their communities years before the migrants arrived. I believe that a lack of planning has exacerbated this disaster, yes, yes. and now it is coming on the backs of black folks yes. and un other underrepresented oh. folks. As the city struggles to find asylum seekers housing, the number of buses carrying migrants to Chicago is now reaching double digits. More than a dozen arrived today. The city has taken in more than 17,000 migrants since last summer. Nearly 10,000 are in city shelters. More than 3,000 are still waiting for placement. Today, the mayor announcing some members of his administration planning to travel to the southern border to assess the situation but does not say when that trip will happen. Going to the border is to make sure that everybody knows that my administration is committed to making sure that we are putting together the full force of government at every single level. We have reached out to the city and mayor's office for comment about why the migrants were not allowed back into the lobby of the first district police station for an extended period of hours, but we have not heard back. And now in regards to the lawsuit, CPS is also listed, but they haven't responded to our requests for comment. Now a spokesperson for the city's law department declined to comment due to pending litigation. We're live outside the first district police station. Andrea Medina, WGN News. Thank you, Andrea.